Today you've joined us at Asprey Hall Golf Club. I'm Piers Ward. And I'm Andy Proudman. And today we're going to be answering your YouTube questions. Welcome to Me and My Golf TV. So this is in response to a comment on YouTube from Victor, who's struggling with uh, his backswing, saying he struggles with an overswing and feels that his wrists break down. And this is something that we see a lot, Pierce, of, uh, you know, a lot of people swing too far in the backswing due to a poor sequence. And the yeah. sequence of the backswing, in terms of how the club and the body move together, is important to create a good downswing and also it has a massive influence on power as well. Absolutely, yeah. A lot of, yeah. So we want to talk about today sort of a, a good checkpoint that you can go through to see if your backswing is in good sequence and just to give you an understanding about it as well, really. So if you just take your setup, Pierce, let's just yeah. go through, first of all, a little bit of sort of theory behind the backswing. Now, if you think about it, guys, the club head, the hands and the shoulders are all going to move in a circle, okay? Now, the biggest circle being the club head. So the club head has the, the longest to travel in the backswing. Now, for a good time backswing, what we want to do, we want the, the club head, the shoulders, and the hands to all sort of reach the top of the backswing at the same time, okay? Yeah. Now, that means that in order for the club head to, to sort of stop at the same time as the shoulders have reached the, the sort of peak position, then the club head has to travel faster, okay? So, we would agree that the club head on the way back travels faster than the hands, yep. and the hands travel faster than the shoulders. Absolutely. Okay? So we like to sort of talk about this L position in the backswing, and this L position is a key checkpoint in order to sort of give you an idea if we've got the right timing, mm -hmm. okay? So if you can just go to that, that place, pit is for us. Absolutely. And we'll just talk about this L position here. So when we talk about the L, we like to see that when the forearm is parallel to the ground, we like to see that the shaft is at 90 degrees. Now, a common thing that we see with a lot of the guys here um, who struggle with an overswing is they aren't, they haven't got this sort of position on the way back. And now, what would you say is a common thing that we see, Piers, which think, causes an overswing with people? Yeah, we, we, we get a lot of misconceptions on backswings about, you know, what they should be doing. And we hear a lot of people say that you have to take it wide. Okay, so they have to get wide so they can get distance. Now, yes, you do have to go wide, but you can go too wide. Now the problem with going too wide is, I have no L position here, but the thing is the majority of us, including me, are not flexible enough to get the club in a good position now without something breaking down and collapsing. I think Victor made a comment and feeling that these wrists were collapsing. So if you think about it, a very wide swing often results in a very narrow backswing, whereas the L shape allows us to keep a, a consistent width to the backswing. And as Andy mentioned earlier, we can finish the backswing together. So we can get the hands, the shoulders, and the club head all finishing together a as good opposed example, to yeah. disconnected in that sequence. So I mean, that's a good example. Let's just go through that one more time, Pierce, yep. there. So a good example, as Pierce mentioned, which is so often sort of people are trying to do, is get this wide backswing. But you can see the shoulders have made a huge turn here, but the club has hardly moved anywhere. Now, really done, aren't they, the shoulders? If I say, OK, Pierce, carry on turning the shoulders now, <laughs> Okay, now he's done. Okay, the shoulders can't really move much further, but that club is nowhere near the top, so something has to give. So then the arms may give and collapse, but then we're all out of sequence, and then it's going to be very hard to sort of start that downswing efficiently. So let's go through how you can practice this, and preferably in front of a mirror. It's great feedback having the mirror there. So we want you to make sure that when we're doing a good backswing, remember the club moves faster than the hands, okay, but it moves at the same time. So if we swing back, to the L position, what we'll notice is that the shoulders are still moving, okay, the hands and arms are still moving, but as you can, as you can see there, the club head has moved faster. So let's do it one more time again, Pierce. So key things to check in the mirror here, left arm's parallel with the ground for a right-handed golfer. We've got that L shape with the shaft between the, uh, the forearm, and you can see Pierce has got some movement in his shoulders here, okay? So whenever we're working at positions, it's all about movement, remember. We've got to move it into Everything the right moves. place. So if you're struggling with a, an overswing or a long backswing or a poor sort of time backswing, get yourself in front of a mirror, work on creating that good L on the way back and it's going to help you shorten that backswing and have a big benefit on improving your downswing as well. Out. So Pierce, let's give it a go. See if you can hit a shot, just uh, creating that same feeling. If you can just do a sort of preset backswing for me as well, just to yeah, no problem. This is, give you the feeling. This is something that I've worked at myself in my own game. So really like to feel as I get that L shape, gives me control of that backswing for sure. All right, let's pull the trigger. 
and a pretty good shot there as well. So hopefully there guys you'll see that that L shape is very important, it's going to help you create a good backswing and hopefully help you if you're struggling with an overswing there. So I uh, hope it helps. Post your comments guys as usual, give us your feedback, we'd love to hear from you and we'll see you next time on Me and My Golf TV.